Howdy. My name is Nonat, and today we're covering The Investigator. I was really back and forth on how I wanted to handle this. I didn't know if I wanted to handle the APG classes like I did with the original classes, where it was very heavily edited and methodical, going through all of the level 1 options, or if I wanted to handle it like my Magus and Summoner playtest videos, which, hearing from you guys, you enjoy a whole heck of a lot more. The, uh, the condensed versions were nice for information and stuff, but for a lot of you who seem to be coming to this simultaneously for information and for entertainment, you really seem to be preferring this style of video. Especially after the last Advanced Archetype videos, where almost unanimously, there were one or two people who missed the old format, but almost unanimously you all preferred this style of content of me, over the rulebook, checking it out. So I think that's how I'm going to handle these. If you like it, let me know in the comments. If you prefer the heavily edited informational class coverage, let me know. But these are going to be kind of different, and I could still make the other kind anyway. Similar to the Magus and Summoner, I'm going to be going over everything in the class in this video. Every single class feature, every single class feat, and everything they get from levels 1 to 20. So these videos will likely be about an hour plus long, because there's a lot to cover when it comes to a class. So let me know your thoughts, let me know what you think about this video in the comments. If you did enjoy it, leave a like, hit subscribe, I have sold out to YouTube. Embrace me YouTube, come to me! Let's go ahead and get started. So The Investigator, obviously released in the APG about a month and a half, two months ago, is very similar to a rogue. It's definitely the closest comparison I can make, but it still does its own thing. First off, expert in perception, reflex, and will saves at level 1, and then trained in fortitude, uh, intelligence is the key ability score. This is the big difference here. I think this is the only martial class to have intelligence be the key ability score, and I love that. I love the fact that this is not a magical class, but it still uses intelligence. This is something that's been missing for a long time from a lot of tabletop RPGs. Not all of them, I know, but, you know. <laughs> uh, you start trained in society, uh, some extra skills determined by your methodology, which we'll be getting into soon, as well as four plus your intelligence modifier uh, number of skills. So not quite as many as, say, a rogue, but still a lot, especially if you're going for that 18 intelligence at level 1. Uh, starting off with 8 additional skills on top of at least 2 others, 10 starting skills is really good. Trained in simple and martial weapons. That surprised me. The fact that the investigator can use martial weapons is crazy. So you can be an investigator with a great axe. That actually leaves uh, the, it open enough for some really cool builds. Uh, light armor, unarmored defense. So this is already sort of looking like a rogue that can use martial weapons, which I think is really cool. Moving on to their first sort of class feature is on the case. Uh, as an investigator, you think of your adventures as cases waiting to be solved. You gain one activity and one reaction you can use to investigate cases. Pursue a lead and clue in. Now, pursue a lead is a lot, so let me condense this for you. So, by examining something or trailing something for one minute, you can declare it a lead. While you are pursuing your lead, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to perception and skill checks regarding that lead. Now, it says here the checks that gain this bonus are up to GM discretion. So it's sort of the investigator's job to present a case on why they should get the bonus. But the normal ones are, you know, looking for them, gathering information on them, recalling knowledge on them. Stuff like that will get the bonus. And if you get really, really clever with it, I'm sure you can convince your GM to give you that plus one on some less conventional <laughs> checks to pursue a lead. Uh, you can have up to two leads active at a time, and if you ever pursue something else, one of your other ones does end. Additionally, you can't pursue the same lead more than once per day. So if you pursue a lead and drop it, you can't re-pursue it until your next daily preparations. So I like this a lot. This is sort of a background exploration, well, it's over here, uh, bonus for investigators, you know? They get this nice little plus one bonus to just tracking their lead, and I think that's really, really cool. It gives them something to be doing outside of combat, which is a lot of what the investigator's about. Clue in is a simple reaction that basically lets you use pursue a lead to assist your ally. If your ally makes a check to investigate a lead that you're already pursuing, you can use your reaction to give them plus one to that check. It's a little niche, but it's really good, and especially 
if you're following something like in the wild, like an animal, and the druid is trying to investigate the tracks, well, they probably have a higher nature skill than you. So you can give them your plus one from pursue a lead and let them handle the nature check. It's pretty cool. And here we start to see the investigator's combat side. Devise a stratagem is their bread and butter. They pick one enemy and devise a stratagem to fight them. They roll 1d20, and whatever number comes up, they can store for the rest of that turn. If they ever strike that enemy this turn, instead of rolling to attack, they can use the number they rolled while devising a stratagem. Additionally, when they do use the number they rolled for Devise a Stratagem, they can add their Intelligence modifier to their attack roll instead of Strength or Dex. However, this does only apply to Finesse, Agile, and Ranged weapons. Or a Sap, apparently. Additionally, if the creature you're fighting is part of the lead you're pursuing, if you're pursuing a bandit captain and you find one of his lackeys, you can instead Devise a Stratagem as a free action. Very, very powerful. Now, you can only do this once per round, and it only lasts for one strike. You can only substitute the number rolled once, and then it's gone. And remember that you only get to add your intelligence modifier to your attack if you use the dice you rolled for devise a stratagem. So a lot of the investigator's combat potential does rely on that initial d20 roll, but it has a ton of reward. And now we get to the investigator's subclasses, and... Boy, are they detailed. They're methodologies, which is sort of how they go about investigating. Starting off with alchemical sciences. This grants the investigator the alchemical crafting skill feat, as well as makes them trained in crafting. They get two common first-level alchemical item formulas, and whenever they gain a level, they learn the formula for one more common alchemical elixir or tool. They also sort of get a really mini baby version of the alchemist's abilities. During your daily preparations, you can create a number of versatile vials, which are basically infused reagents. You can use the quick tincture action, which we can see down here, to turn one of these vials into an elixir or alchemical tool for which you know the formula. But yeah, quick tincture, very similar to the alchemist quick alchemy. Uh, if you have a free hand or if you're wearing alchemist tools, uh, you can spend one of your vials and turn it into any elixir you know, but it only lasts until the end of your turn. So this is sort of a full turn action. I guess it's only two actions, not a full turn. But yeah, for one action, you pull it out and create it, and then for another action, you can drink it. So really, basically, investigators, as long as they have vials, they have a two-action self-heal to make healing elixirs. Really good stuff. Again, if you take the alchemical sciences methodology. Next up is Sherlock Holmes, or empiricism. Everything comes down to data. Calculating statistics, running numbers, and using induct- I'm stopping right there. You get it. <laughs> You are trained in one intelligence-based skill of your choice. You gain the, that's odd, investigator feat, which is the worst feat in the game. And you gain the expeditious inspection free action. For a free action, once every 10 minutes, you recall knowledge, seek, or sense motive. Fantastic stuff. This one's really powerful. We'll get to the, that's odd, investigator feat. I don't like it. Next up is forensic medicine, which the chirurgeon alchemist wishes it was. You become trained in medicine, the forensic acumen, and battle medicine skill feats. And when you use battle medicine on a target, they recover additional hit points equal to your level. And instead of becoming immune to battle medicine for one day, they're only immune for one hour. This is insane, and that should have been the chirurgeon's abilities on the alchemist. This is nuts. Battle medicine every hour? That's gross. But it does lend itself to a sort of support investigator build, which I really like. And interrogation, which grants you trained in diplomacy, the no cause for alarm skill feat, as well as being able to pursue a lead via conversation. The example it gives is that when making an impression, like a normal conversation, you can then pursue them as a lead and start getting plus one to checks around them. They also gain the pointed question action. You can do this to any creature once per hour for one action, and you ask a question in such a pointed and charming way, they can't help but answer you. You attempt a diplomacy check against the creature's will DC, and if you critically succeed, they must directly answer your question. Doesn't have to be a truthful answer, but you do get plus four to a sense motive if they try to lie to you. If you succeed the check, it's the same as critical, but the bonus is only plus two if they're lying. If you fail the check, they can lie like normal, and if you critically fail the check, they can refuse to answer you, and they like you less. 
due to your aggravating attention. That's really fun. I like that. This is a really cool one. Uh, this is one that one of the players in my campaign has used one or two times, and it's always really cool when it comes up. It is so cool and helpful in roleplay situations. I love abilities like this that give roleplay mechanics. I know some people don't like to mix mechanics and roleplay, but I love, you know, talking to the players in character, and then one of them busts out this action that's like, yeah, I get plus four against a sense motive. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, he's lying. Also, sorry retroactively that I'm not going over all of these skill feats. I just don't have the time for that since we're already going through everything here. Uh, it's going to take forever. So some of these may be a lot stronger with the skill feat they gain, but I think most of them are level one or two skill feats. So they're not super game breaking. And the final level one class feature, aside from feats, is strategic strike. If you're making a strike that uses your intelligence modifier for the attack roll, you get to add precision damage. This is basically just like a rogue's sneak attack. In fact, I think it scales better than a sneak attack. I think it scales one better. So by the end of the game, this is a 5d6. I think rogues cap at 4d6. I could be wrong. And this is obviously made to be used with devise a stratagem, where you roll, if you get a good number, you can strike with using your intelligence modifier, so if you hit them, uh, you deal bonus precision damage thanks to strategic strike. I don't know why, but when I think about this, I always imagine the investigator fighting with a scalpel, like a doctor's scalpel, like analyzing the target and finding the perfect place to cut. I don't know, that's literally what I always see when I think of this. Quickly going through their class features, they get skill feats, skill interests, general feats, and then things start to get different. Keen recollection at third level is really good. If you ever recall knowledge and you're not trained in the skill, you still get to add your level. If you have no points in occultism, you still get to add your level to your role to recall knowledge occultism. That's just insane. Also at third level, again, making investigators much more like rogues, skillful lessons. At every odd-numbered level, they gain an additional skill feat, which normally characters only get at even levels. However, the skill feats the investigator can take must be for intelligence, wisdom, or charisma-based skills, or the skill you gain from methodology. So this means that most of the skill feats that investigators get at odd levels are going to be supporting their arcana, occultism, nature, etc. And the more I'm reading this, the more I think it will be interesting to make a nature-based investigator. How cool would that be? You can just make him like a game warden, give him like the Beastmaster archetype, and oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's a cool idea. I'm going to run with that. Ability boosts at fist level, ancestry feats, weapon expertise, vigilant senses increasing their perception to master at 7th level, weapon specialization at 7th level, fortitude goes up to expert at 9th, investigator expertise, which increases your bonus from pursue a lead from plus 1 to plus 2, as well as increasing your class DC. This is really good, this also affects your clue in reaction, so when you're assisting an ally, they also get a plus 2 now instead of plus 1. Deductive improvisation is actually kind of insane. Uh, let, basically, let me simplify it. If you are untrained, you can now perform trained actions with a skill. If you're trained with a skill, you can now perform expert actions with that skill. So yeah, up to master actions, you only have to be an expert to attempt them. A lot of actions for skills are locked behind certain proficiencies. This reduces the requirement by one, except for legendary actions. That's such a good thing that just all investigators get. You don't need to spend anything on it. Every investigator at level 11 just has this. Really good. Uh, will saves go up to master and auto crit on success. Perception goes up to legendary at 13th level. Really good. Uh, expert in armor at level 13. So they are really, really vulnerable. Investigators are not very bulky boys. At uh, level 13, they become a master with martial weapons. Pretty dang good. 15th level evasion, you get uh, master reflex saves and auto crits on success. Greater weapon specialization, greater resolve, which is, uh, I was just talking about this in another, in another video, I think it was on the summoner, where your will saves are now legendary, and if you ever crit fail, you normal fail. You can no longer ever critically fail a will save again. Really good. And if you fail against a will save, uh, you take half damage. Master in light armor, and master detective. Now, this is level 19, so this one doesn't bug me as much as some others, but this is one of the meta-breaking feats that I'm not a fan of. If you're pursuing the subject of a lead, and you enter a new location that includes another clue towards solving the mystery, the GM tells you that it's in the room and what it is, whether it be an object or a person or a spell effect. 
I guess the balancing part of this is that there's if there's multiple clues in the room, the GM only informs you of one and doesn't tell you if you found the one they told you about or found a different one. I don't like this. Like, I understand that's the point of the investigator, that you can investigate things, and especially at level 19, you can solve any case because you're a godly investigator, but this just removes gameplay. This doesn't add anything. This removes the ability to roleplay. This makes every room. Is there a clue in here, Mr. GM? <sighs> yes. There's a very important person in this room for a clue. Oh, boy. And there's one person in the room. I found it. I just... I don't like it. It's so meta-breaking. There's more like this, but we'll get to that. Moving on to the investigator feats. Hey. Hey, you. Yeah, watching the video. Have you subscribed? Have you liked the video? Have you rung the bell to get notifications? Dude. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? Uh, you like the content, right? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's good content, right? You, uh, you want to like the video, right? No, 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 they're liking. They're going to like it. You're going to like it, right? They're, they're going to leave a like. It's okay. They might, they might even subscribe, right? They might even subscribe. No, 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 that's okay. Yeah, see? They're, they're liking the video right now. Thank you. Anyway, um, where was I? Right, um, <laughs> uh, investigator feats. Starting off with flexible studies. You've collected a cross-section of information on various disciplines you can refer to when preparing for various tasks. During your daily preparations, you can become trained in one skill of your choice. This is really good. You know, you study for anything and then you become good at it. The same gripes apply as when I did the Sorcerer Bloodline video on the Imperial Bloodline spell, which is, I guess I'm better at pushing rocks now. Like, I, I understand the comments on that video. Like, you know, form is like half of it anyway, so learning better form makes you better. And I guess I get it. It's just kind of weird to me how you can study how to tumble like an acrobat and then you're just better at it. You didn't practice. I don't know. I feel like this feat would be too weak if it was limited to just intelligence-based skills, obviously. But, I don't know. It's a good feat. That's basically all it is. It's a really good feat that makes you even more malleable as a skill junkie. Known weaknesses is fantastic. Whenever you devise a stratagem, which you're pretty much doing every turn, you get to recall knowledge on the target as a free action, which will already get you some nice information, and if you critically succeed your recall knowledge check, you, and if you convey the info, and all of your allies get plus one to their attack rolls for the next round. Now, this only applies to their next attack roll, but you know, if you're in a four-man party, that's four plus ones to attack rolls. It's really good. Granted, only on a critical success. Takedown Expert gets you a few extra weapons you can use with your uh, device of stratagem. So normally it's, it's limited to, you know, Agile and Finesse, but this adds any weapon in the club group, like a club, or even as a staff, uh, to be used with device of stratagem, and you can also make any strike non-lethal at no penalty with this feat. That's really, really good, especially if you're, you know, the investigator who wants to take people alive. And here we have it, the one I was just waiting to complain about, and a lot of people who know me know I hate this feat. That's odd. When you enter a new location, such as a room or corridor, you immediately notice one thing out of the ordinary. The GM determines what it is or whether there's nothing reasonable to pick up, skipping obvious clues that can easily be noticed without a check or specifically looking for them. You learn only that an area or object is suspicious, but not why it's suspicious. I hate this. I hate this so much. What is the fun part of walking into a room, every room in the game, and saying, GM, is there something suspicious? Uh, yeah, there's a brick sticking out of the wall. Cool. And it even says you can't, if there's something obviously suspicious, the GM can't use that unless there's nothing else in the room. So if you walk in and there's a blood stain on the floor, that's not the suspicious thing you find. It's the weird desk drawer sitting slightly ajar that you just get to find. No perception check, nothing. I hate it. Again, you don't get the specifics, but you will still say, oh, there's a giant blood stain. What's suspicious? The desk. Have fun. Like, there's, I don't know. This is just me. There are definitely people out there who will love this, but good lord, I feel bad for GMs having to play with this feat on their, on an investigator character. Like, it sucks. If you enter a corridor and there is a trap, ever a trap, 
the, every time you go into a corridor, the investigator is going to ask, is there something suspicious? Yeah, the floor on the hallway is suspicious. Cool, there's a trap. And then if the GM says, no, there's not a trap. I don't like this. I could complain about this for hours, but I would just be repeating myself and giving more examples. Sorry. I know a lot of people love the investigator, and I like the investigator mostly. But this is almost on level with my hatred of fighters. That's how much I hate this. Fighters are one thing, but at least they are made to fight. And investigators are made to investigate, but they're not made to just automatically know. Make this a once per day thing or something. That'd be fine. Once per day or once per hour when you enter a room, you can ask if there's something suspicious. But it's literally every room. There is no cooldown. There is nothing. Every room you go into, you know. Trap Finder, I believe, is actually the exact same as the rogue feat of the same name. Uh, you gain a plus one bonus to precision checks to find traps, to AC against traps, and to saving throws against traps. Really, really good. And even if you're not searching for traps, you still get a check to find traps. So if you enter a dungeon, you can sort of roll a perception check, and that just counts as looking for traps, even if you're not actively looking for traps. It's really, really cool. You can even disable traps that require Master in Thievery, and if you are Master, you can disable Legendary traps. That's just really solid. This one's really cool, and I like this. Uh, effectively, you're sort of a, a down-and-dirty investigator who does whatever they need to pursue their lead, and you gain your Pursue a Lead Circumstance bonus, that plus one, to any Thievery checks that apply. So if you're trying to pick someone's pocket for a clue, or you're trying to break into someone's home because you know something about your lead is in there, you get your pursue a lead bonus to that. I really like this. You also get underworld lore, so it's a lot easier for you to remember stuff about the criminal underbelly of society. This one's really fun. This would probably be the uh, investigator I'd want to make. But you still gotta think what's better, that or just making a, a rogue who does thief things. <laughs> Athletic strategist is really funny to me because it's just a nerd using physics and everything to get the better of a bulky opponent. When you use devise a stratagem, you can use the number you rolled for an athletics check to disarm, grapple, shove, or trip. And instead of using strength, you use intelligence. So you make an athletics check using intelligence. <laughs> And it's so funny, I just imagine, you know, just the super nerdy kid and the big old bully who misses him with the first swing, and the nerd dodges down and just puts up his anime glasses and goes, You fool. With your massive center of gravity, vanishes, appears behind him, and just pushes, like, upward and diagonally. You won't be able to keep yourself standing. And the guy, <laughs> No strength involved at all. It's just the angle and timing at which he pushes him. Oh my god. I'm so stupid. I love this. This is another really fun one. Also, I really like this picture. Sorry, I'm just stopping on this picture. Because I love how the investigator is like, uh -huh, He was a monster the whole time. And the guy's like, What? A monster? Me? <laughs> Red herring is another sort of meta-breaking feet and i don't like it so you're gonna hear me complain a lot about these when you pursue a lead your gm tells you no no no, that's not important you don't need to worry about that but <laughs> let them worry about it i know they don't have to take it i guess if the player takes this feat they don't want to pursue meaningless leads but that can lead to such fun stuff and in my opinion if you're a gm and your players go so off course it's your job as the gm to keep them on course. It says, oh, if you found a splatter of gray mud on the wall and thought it was suspicious and pursued it, the GM would tell you, no, that's actually not important. It's just mud. No! As a GM, you integrate that. They found that. They honed in on that. And you're like, okay, okay. Maybe the person committing these murders is actually also a summoner using earth elementals. And that's why there was a splatter of mud. And it becomes part of the story. How lame would it be if, as a character, the GM, like, over-describes a room and mentions the slightly torn curtains, and you go, I'd like to pursue those curtains. Like, I'd like to like, pursue a lead on those curtains and try to figure out what tore them. And the GM goes, N no, no, th those aren't important. You don't, you don't have to do that. That's not fun! <laughs>
That's not fun! I apologize to everyone. I've been very opinionated like the last two or three days. I don't know what it is, but I'm taking it out on you guys, and I hope you're okay with it. <laughs> Shared stratagem is... Pretty okay, it's just some nice team synergy. If you ever devise a stratagem and then use that dice to hit an enemy, and you successfully hit, you can designate an ally, and until the start of your next turn, the creature you hit is flat-footed to that ally. For a level 2 feat, it's pretty good. I feel like it would have been better if this was a slightly higher level feat and it made them flat-footed to everyone. And it's possible that that feat already exists and I'm just going to look like an idiot. But similar to the Magus and Summoner um, videos, I scanned through these and I'm sort of just going over them with you. Uh, so some of these are actually live first-time readings for me as well. Solid lead is pretty cool. Like I said before, whenever you drop a lead that you've been pursuing, you usually can't pursue it again until the next day. But with solid lead, you can designate one lead per day as your solid lead. And for the rest of that day, you can drop it and re-pursue it as many times as you want. So this is really effective in a long-term campaign where you're pursuing the same lead the entire game but there are days you want to track other things. So if you're doing a side quest or whatever, you can always drop the Lich as your solid lead, pursue two other things, and then when those are resolved, even on the same day, just re begin re-pursuing your solid lead of the Lich. Really cool stuff. Also, I should have mentioned, rather than spending the 10 minutes to re-pursue your solid lead like normal, one action. At any time, you can re-pick up your solid lead. It's really good. Alchemical Discoveries is simple. If you have the Alchemical Sciences methodology, you gain an extra formula every time you level up, uh, as well as one extra versatile vial per day if you're an expert, two if you're master in crafting, and three if you're legendary. I don't know if I ever said it, but the Alchemical uh, methodology gets as many vials as their intelligence modifier. So unlike an alchemist who gets more as they level up, theirs pretty much only increases if their intelligence increases, or if you take the Alchemical Discoveries feat. Detective's readiness is pretty simple. Your pursue a lead circumstance bonus now also applies to saving throws against the subject of your lead. You can additionally use your reaction to give that bonus to an ally's saving throw against the subject of your lead. Really good against final bosses or final confrontations of someone you've been tracking. If you're tracking that bandit leader and he tries to trip you, you, and if you use your reaction and your allies, uh, gain plus one to your saving throws. Solid. Oh my god, oh my god, look at this guy. Lie Detector is a great feat. You can only take it if you have Empiricism or Interrogation as your methodology, but you get plus one to checks to Sense Motive if someone is trying to lie to you, and if you succeed your check and you know they're lying to you, you can use that to your advantage to gain plus one to your next Deception, Diplomacy, Intimidation, or Performance check against them in the next minute. So, really, really good. Just sad that it's uh, restricted to empiricist and interrogation. Ongoing investigation is cool. Basically, if you're just exploring, not like actively moving around, but exploring, uh, you are always investigating. You don't move at half speed, and you can do something else while simultaneously investigating. It's really cool. Oh, Scalpel's point for forensic medicine is so cool. If you critically hit with an attack on which you substitute your attack roll using Devise a Stratagem, and you dealt piercing or slashing damage, you also deal 1d6 persistent bleed. Is 1d6 persistent bleed a lot? Not necessarily. Is this feat really cool? Yeah. Just with a dagger you stab in and you just know exactly where their arteries are, so you can just peck at their arteries on your way back out with your stab, and they just start gushing blood. Oh, God. Yes! Remember what I said about the doctor's scalpel? Yes! With strategic assessment, the first time you critically hit a creature with a devise a stratagem substituted attack, the GM must tell you one of four things. Their highest weakness, their highest resistance, their lowest saving throw, or an immunity they have. And if they have no immunities, they GM cannot just tell you that. They have to tell you useful information. So if they tell you, oh, they have no immunities, that doesn't count. They have to tell you something from this list. Pretty cool. First off, thank God Connect the Dots is an uncommon feat, because oh my word is this overcomplicated. Let me try to explain it simply. You are pursuing two leads, and you focus on them for ten minutes. You then roll a society check, or, if the two leads are items, a crafting check, and depending on the level of success and the DC set by the GM, which is all that goes into is how to set the DC, 
If you critically succeed, the GM tells you how connected the two leads are. If they're highly, somewhat, tangentially, or not connected at all, it also, the GM also tells you a specific way they are connected. If you normal succeed, the GM just doesn't tell you the specific connection, but will tell you how connected they are. If you fail, they're inconclusive, and I believe this is supposed to be a secret check, because if you critically fail, the GM gives you an incorrect degree of connection. I'm not going to go over the whole setting the DC thing, because good lord is it overcomplicated. About deception and will DCs of creatures, master or expert DCs if they're items, and blah, 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 blah. Predictive purchase! I hate this. This is another one. Now, this one is not on Paizo. This one is on every tabletop RPG, and I know there's a lot of players out there who love this. But, go, oh, go, oh, I hate these. These are, oh, wait, I actually do have climbing spikes. And especially this one. Usually at least takes a full minute. But for two actions, you can take any piece of adventuring gear or consumable up to half your level and just have it in your backpack. You still have to pay for it. Your backpack becomes a mobile merchant. From this point on, your backpack just has whatever you need so long as you have the money because you totally forgot, but you did buy this item the last time you went shopping. Sure. Like, mm. This is just a way for a player to be like, why do I need to plan for anything? I can literally just have whatever I need. It takes any kind of strategy and planning out of your shopping trip. Like, aside from buying equipment, why buy anything? If you can just pull it out when you need it. Oh, I'm hungry. Good thing I have rations. Oh, that's a cliff. Good thing I have a climbing kit. Investigator, I want to like you. I really do. I really do. And this isn't even just Investigator. Anybody can take the Prescient Planner and Prescient Consumable feats. Anybody. Don't take them. Just buy your own damn Consumable. <laughs> I wonder how many people are going to think I'm, like, super serious about this. I'm excited for the comments. Thorough research. Whenever you succeed at a recall knowledge check, you get an additional fact about the subject. And when you critically succeed, the GM gives even more information and context. This can be really useful, uh, especially if you've worked out at your table that, you know, like a normal recall knowledge gets you like what their, one of their saving throws or their highest attribute or something like that. Uh, this thorough research can be really good. If you can normally succeed and ask, you know, or critically succeed and ask what are their, what are their saving throws look like? Uh, that's really cool. This sort of changes from table to table. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of different things about the recall knowledge skill. So it's a little muddy, but it's good. Blind fight. As long as you're master in perception, which I think all investigators are. <laughs> Normally, when a creature is hidden, all other creatures are flat-footed to that creature. Uh, but not you. If a creature is hidden, you are not flat-footed to them. And you also only need to succeed a DC 5 check to hit a hidden creature rather than DC 11. And if you're ever adjacent to a completely undetected creature that is your level or lower, they become hidden. You know something's there. You don't know what it is and you can't see it, but you know it's there. Clue them all in is really, really good. Your clue in reaction can now be used on all allies that are attempting the same check. I think this would work as well if you have the feat from earlier that gives you a bonus to saving throws against your lead subject. Oh no, okay. So this only applies to investigating a lead. It does not involve the saving throws, which is unfortunate. I feel like as a GM, I'd allow that. This is a little niche otherwise. Okay, who done it at first, I had some problems with. But after f fully reading the whole thing, I think it's fine. Who done it is a way to effectively Sherlock Holmes a case. And I think they've done it in the best way they can. Uh, you spend 10 minutes to pursue a lead. And when doing so, once per day for one lead, you can ask two questions to the GM. And the GM must answer yes, no, or it doesn't matter. At first, I'm like, oh, not another meta-breaking one. But the questions are specifically worded. They can only ask these questions. And these questions are worded in such a way that they're supposed to represent the thought process of the investigator. You can ask, was this clue left by a creature? specific creature you ask, was this clue left within the last hour, within the last day, was the creature that left the clue in a heightened emotional state, and did the creature attempt to conceal the clue? This is really cool, and I like it. This lets, it's definitely a mechanical way of 
portraying the cogs and the puzzle pieces in the investigator's head, putting things together. Now, you can only ever ask these questions about one lead once. Ever. So this is really good. It's good for, you know, following side quests. I will say this is a great way for the GM to point the players in the direction they want them to go, but it's solid. It's solid. Because it's limited to five questions, you can only ask one question per lead. That's actually a really cool feat. I enjoy that. If you want to be the grandpa from Jackie Chan Adventures, you can take just one more thing. Um, if your most recent action was to faint, request, or demoralize, and you failed but did not critically fail, you can spend an action to re-roll the check and use the new result. If the target happens to be the subject of your lead, you also double your bonus from pursue a lead on that roll. You can only do this to a creature once per day. But you can also use this on more social situations, such as to lie, gather information, make an impression, or coerce somebody. But in this case, rather than it taking one action, it takes half the time spent on the original action, where stuff like make an impression uh, lasts 10 minutes. So it would take five minutes to add in just one more thing. Ongoing strategy is just sort of a small damage buff to non-devise a stratagem attacks. If you did not devise a stratagem and you're not using your intelligence to attack somebody, you deal a small amount of bonus damage equal to your number of precision damage dice from your strategic strike. So at level 10, I think that'll be adding three bonus damage to all non-strategic strike attacks. It's okay. It's not bad. Suspect of Opportunity is phenomenal for combat. Uh, if a foe ever takes a hostile action against you, you can use your reaction to put your main lead on hold and pursue the target that attacked you as your lead. This lasts until the end of combat, and at the end of combat, they stop being your lead, and the lead you dropped is re-upped. This is really good with all of the different feats that synergize with giving you bonuses against your lead. Being able to make any enemy attacking you into your lead is phenomenal. For C, danger is a really solid reaction. If someone is attacking you, you can use your reaction to swap out your armor class with your perception DC, and they target that. This means that anything hindering your armor class for any reason actually does not apply because your perception check DC uh, does not get affected by that. So they have to beat your perception DC in order to hit you. I originally thought this was an insane reaction, and it's still pretty good, but after doing the math, if you have, like, enchanted light armor with, like, plus three to dexterity, it'll probably only total out to maybe a plus two or three to armor class, which is really good, but unless my math is off, it could possibly be better. It's very possible my math is not correct. But this does sort of relate a little bit to nimble dodge from the rogues. Albeit, this even ignores something as common as flat-footed, which is really solid to just be able to get rid of flat-footed and buff to your perception DC, which investigators do become legendary at level 13, one level later. Reason rapidly. For one action, you make five recall knowledge checks. Uh, I think there's another one. I don't remember who gets it, but it's called Hypercognition. I think it might be Bards. But yeah, they get this level 12 to make five instantaneous recall knowledge checks. Uh, I think this is for those games where the GM doesn't tell you what to roll in order to recall knowledge on a creature. And you just say, okay, I'll just roll Arcana, Occultism, Nature, Religion, and Lore. <laughs> and I'll just see if any of those work. <laughs> it's really good. This is another feat I'm not a huge fan of. Plot the Future. This is just an in-game mechanic to ask the GM, hey, what do we do next? You analyze something that you plan to do within the next seven in-game days. You then learn if it's likely to happen, somewhat likely, somewhat unlikely, or highly unlikely. And then the GM gives you a piece of advice suggesting the course of action you could take to make the chosen event more or less likely. Again, I'm not a fan. I'm glad it's uncommon so GMs have the option to just say, no, you can't do this. I'm sure there are groups out there who love this. Having the option to be like, hey, GM, we don't really know what to do next. How do we get to the festival next week? And the GM's like, buy a ticket. <laughs> not my, not a huge fan. I guess I'm just not a big fan of the things that can be easily roleplayed. And rather than just ask the GM, I'd rather talk it out in the party. Since the Unseen is great. If you ever fail a check to seek... As a reaction, you can instantly make all undetected creatures in the area you're seeking only hidden. So you don't get to see what they are, but you do get to know no matter what if there's something there. This is pretty cool. I like this because it's specifically for undetected creatures. It doesn't just 
tell you that there's something suspicious. I'm moving on. I'm sorry. Strategic bypass is great. If you ever attack with the d20 you rolled for devise a stratagem, you ignore resistance equal to your intelligence modifier. That's just really good. At level 14, you'll be reducing people's resistance to any of the damage you're dealing by 5. That's huge. Oh, there's the one I was talking about earlier. Remember earlier when I'm like, this will be better if it affected all your allies? This is where it is. At level 16, when you use shared stratagem, you can designate up to 10 allies, and they are flat-footed against the first attack from every ally you share this with, and each of those first attacks deals an extra 2d6 precision damage if it hits. Oh my god. I would have, I would take way too long to get into this, but there are some nasty combos you can do with this. I'm gonna just say Marshall and Investigator. Oh my god. Implausible purchase. Now, instead of being limited to once per time between, cause usually you can only do the pull out of your backpack once per shopping trip. Now you can do it whenever you want for one action instead of two. And five times per day, you can pull out a common consumable up to six levels lower. You can just say, oh, I have these level 10 common consumables. We know how I feel about this. We're moving on. Reconstruct the scene is another one that I'm kind of okay with. It's still, the whole scene is just roleplay, which isn't, I guess, bad. But effectively, the investigator spends a minute analyzing a scene and then a blurry, indescript recreation of the events plays out in their head. You won't be able to tell who anyone is or exactly where and when it all went down, but you can almost see, like, blurry figures. You know, one walked in, hit the victim on the head, the victim fell, hitting the coffee table, which caused the wine to spill, mixing with their blood to create the odd puddle we came in to see. And, you know, you get that. It... It's cool to have an ability that does it, and you don't have to make a check. This one I'm okay with. It's such a high level. It's not a perfect record. I think it's cool. It's kind of like, for any of you who have played Danganronpa, it's like seeing the the comic not all filled out. That's only going to make sense to, like, 10% of my viewers, maybe. Lead Investigator. You have to have clue them all in, and you can spend one minute briefing up to four allies about your lead, and then they just permanently get that same bonus to pursuing a lead that you give yourself. This is fantastic. It doesn't apply to everything. It says, like, the saving throws with detective's readiness does not apply. But if you guys need to split up and search for clues, this is the best way to do it, you know? It does wear off after one day, but it takes, I think, 10... I said 10 minutes or one minute to, uh... Yeah, one minute. So every day you're just like, all right, team, this is what we're looking for. Split up! It's really good. This is kind of interesting, but also kind of out of nowhere. It's really complicated, but the long and short of it is that you as the investigator jury-rig your own magic item and give it your own trigger, anything you want, and store any fourth level or lower spell from any spell tradition within it. If the trigger ever goes off, the spell is instantly cast, and it can only affect you. Even if it can affect multiple targets, it only affects the investigator. Uh, the common use for this will just be to, like, probably keep a level 4 heal spell in it, and then heal yourself for 4d8 plus 32. I guess whenever you drop below half health, I guess you could be as one of the triggers. It's not bad. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, though. Nothing about the trickster so far has ever been about crafting and creating magical items you know i guess the alchemist a little bit but this just seems out of left field i don't really enjoy it this would have been a cool item for the alchemist i mean a cool feat for the alchemist in my opinion i think the alchemist could have made some really cool use out of this but i don't know if you're in if you're an investigator that is specialized in crafting this is a really cool feat otherwise it just kind of comes out of nowhere the final two feats at level 20, and then we're done with this hour and 15 minute long recording. Everyone's a suspect. After interacting with a creature for one minute, you automatically pursue them as a lead. You can have any number of such leads at a given time. What this means, especially, is you can 
always be following your allies as a lead now, which means if they ever go missing or you need to find them, you get your pursue a lead bonuses. And this also means that anyone you talk to for more than a minute, you start getting your bonuses from pursuing a lead. This is phenomenal. Is it only for roleplay and information gathering? Yes. Is that a bad thing? Not at all. That is exactly what an investigator does. That's a great feat. Level 20 may be high, but it's also so powerful. This gives you infinite leads, which is something you can't have up to this point. And Just the Facts is another one that I am totally cool with. You fundamentally understand everything to the point where your research can't possibly be wrong. You are permanently quickened and can use the extra action, I think I should say only, to recall knowledge. Because uh, with the way that's actually worded, you can use the extra action to recall knowledge. It doesn't say you can't use it for anything else. That's a rules loophole right there if you want to use that. Uh, don't use that. No one likes loopholes. Except for the people who do. Your checks to recall knowledge are no longer secret checks. And when you recall knowledge, you use the outcome one success better than your check. And if any effect would cause you to gain inaccurate information, such as a critical failure uh, or using the dubious knowledge skill feat, you instantly know if what you've been given is inaccurate. So that makes the dubious knowledge skill feat incredible. Basically, at this point, no matter what happens, you're getting some kind of information. Even if an ally recalls knowledge and gets false information, you are so knowledgeable that you can say, no, no, you're wrong. I'm right. Listen to me. <laughs> I am the investigator. <laughs> Come with me if you want to inform. <laughs> All right, guys, I've been recording for an hour and 20 minutes. I need to stop and then edit this and then maybe record something else. But thank you guys so much for watching. Again, let me know if you like this style. I know it's a long freaking video. But from the last week or so, you guys really seem to like long videos. So if you like this, leave a like, hit the bell, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and leave a comment telling me your thoughts on the investigator. If you're playing an investigator, your favorite feats, your least favorite feats, your thoughts on the meta-breaking idea that some investigators can do. I want to know what you guys think. I'm sure there's going to be some heated comments in the comments, you guys love to defend and argue your favorite points, and I kind of love that. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. There are links in the description to all my normal stuff. Uh, the one I'm going to plug especially is the Discord. If you're not already part of the Discord, please join. We are over 130 members, and it has just been so active. Such amazing, cool people talking about Pathfinder and D&D &D and the Hot Wheels tabletop RPG. Oh, you're missing out. All right, I'm going to stop rambling. We're closing in on an hour, 20 minutes. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.